Earth Keeper are very pleased to present, acclaimed author, award-winning healer, teacher and channel, Ariel Faith Michael. Ariel Faith Michael is the celebrated author of the beautiful and truly amazing book, Faith of Michael, Make It Count. As an emissary of the Divine Feminine and prolific master channel of Archangel Michael, she brings forth prolific and poignant channeled messages. A warm, nurturing person of great wisdom, dignity and integrity, Ariel Faith Michael is a deeply beloved, long-time member, of the Earth Keeper family and part of the event staff. In this wonderful presentation, filmed live before an audience of over 500 attendees, at the Crystal Vortex, Earth Keeper Gathering, in Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas in December of 2015, she speaks on the topic of acceptance. She is a resident of Waimea, Hawaii, where she serves as a highly respected, and adored, health professional. Ariel is recognized, and formally honored, in her healing capacity. She was awarded THR Health Professional of the Year, in Hawaii. Ariel's brilliantly written, must-read book, Make It Count, is available on her website, and on Amazon. Her website is, www.thegoldenangel.us. And we are pleased to confirm that Ariel Faith Michael, will be also speaking, and offering book signings at the upcoming Earth Keeper 2016, Stargate event, in sunny Denver, Colorado, November 18th, through 21st, 2016. Enjoy, and Namaste. The next person that I'd like to introduce is a, just a wonderful soul, a, a dear, dear sister that we've known for many lifetimes and many years, and she's absolutely a radiant energy and part of the family. A warm welcome for Ariel Faith Michael, please. Thank you for the morning. I should actually say it how we say it in Hawaii in the morning. Aloha kakahiaka. So I'm Ariel Faith Michael, and I'm from Waimea, the big island of Hawaii. And I want it, it's always so great to be together with my Earthkeeper family. Okay. It's it's wonderful to be with all of you again, especially in magical Arkansas. It's just it's just amazing. And what I wanted to say was on my theme here. I really was going to talk about something else, but Archangel Michael had different plans, so last minute he changed it to this theme. And he said, you know, there are three things that everyone needs. To be heard, to be loved, and especially to belong. And to me, the word belong goes hand in hand with the word acceptance. And so that is going to be my topic for today's talk story. For those of you who have heard me speak at other Earthkeeper gatherings, uh, you or read my book, Faith of Michael, Make It Count, you have some insights of my angelic connection and human life with Archangel Michael. Uh, we made several agreements to each other before I came to Earth as a walk-in. Now, the term walk-in may be new to some of you, and no, it's not like those signs that you see in the salons where you go to get your manicures and pedicures that says, walk-ins welcome. <laughs> It's a little different than that. <laughs> and, you know, every time I see those signs, I always got to kind of smile and go, if they only knew. <laughs> but, you know, one day, you know, they'll get it, and it'll say, ETs and walk-ins welcome. So that, that'll be my kind of salon. <laughs> so for those of you who do not know what a walk-in is, simply put, it's a soul that doesn't exchange with another soul already residing in an existing body. So say you bought a new car, and, but after a while it just wasn't working for you. So someone comes along and they're interested in your car. So the two of you, you know, come to this agreement and the exchange is made. But for me, the pre-owned vehicle is not a car, it's this body that you see before you. And this actually happened 
during a near-death experience at the age of 33. Many of you have incarnated numerous times, and within your cellular memories resides rich experiences I cannot even begin to imagine. You see, this is my first and my last human incarnation. But I am able to access the former soul's experiences, all her likes, dislikes, and everything in between. And this helps me to wrap my mind around the emotional responses that surface just out of the blue over things that really don't matter to me. So besides dealing with the former souls, what I call misguided energies, I also need to deal with my own simultaneously. And that means owning them, learning from them, and also releasing them. Easier said than done. But it's a process and all a part of being human. And for me, it, it again comes down to the word acceptance. So let's talk about being authentic. If you were to write down your deepest, most profound spiritual truth, one that you knew for sure beyond any doubt, what would that be? And what would it take to walk that talk of truth out in the open? And I don't mean like among like a group like us, you know, like minds, like hearts, but in a place where you would truly be the odd person out. Here we come back to the word of acceptance. We all at one time or another have looked to others for confirmation and acceptance. We may have even been so bold to share our most profound truth with someone we thought was enlightened, only to have it blow up in our face. Being your authentic spiritual self is a fire many are hesitant to walk through, and with good reason. The fear of losing that which we hold most dear, be it relationships, financial stability, credibility, self-identity, even acceptance, because we have come out of the spiritual closet, it's huge. But we can't hide from ourselves. We can try to suppress it or ignore it, but once we know deep in our core a personal truth, we cannot pretend not to know it. Archangel Michael told me long ago, you can go with ease or grace, or you can go kicking and screaming, but either way, you're going to go. Um, you know, your choice. And it took me many years of getting hit in the head by those celestial two-by-fours to take the path of ease and grace. For the last eight years, I have worked in a very small hospital, and we care for everyone, what we call cradle to grave, all in the same unit. And being in that type of environment, I am reminded every day of how precious and fleeting life is. The human vessel does have an end date, but the soul that resides within is infinite. But it needs expression. It needs an outlet. It needs to evolve. And what better way to express our soul's light than to bring it to the shadows where fear and despair resides? Now, I love Harry Potter. In, in one of the series, Professor Dumbledore says, there comes a time when one must choose between doing what is right and what is easy. So keeping the light in the light, you know, that's easy. But it's also like a boat that leaves the harbor. You go, what's the point? We really came here to do the work. I realize now that my greatest growth, be it courage or lessons in leadership, even lessons in faith, were made possible because of the dark nights of my soul. And standing where I am now, I can honestly say I have no regrets, absolutely none. But it took me a long time to reach that point because I am finally comfortable in my own skin. So, what is life? You know, mankind has tried to answer that question since the beginning of time. And my answer is layers of crumpled papers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we come into this life new and untouched, still connected to that ream of paper from which we originated from. And there was no division. But as time went on, we began to morph into this crumpled piece of paper a separate wad from the ream. And in addition to that, we allowed outside sources to pile their stuff 
on our, to our water paper, whether it be from gossip, from drama, from trauma, the wad just keeps getting bigger. Our true authentic selves are somewhere buried underneath all these layers of stuff. And in this condition, we have become paralyzed, disconnected, and isolated. We have lost our sense of place, who we truly are, and what we came to do in this life. So how do we replenish our spiritual energy? It is through connecting with places and people, like here, where the higher frequencies exist, the sites that are sacred, whatever that may mean to you. There we can pe begin to peel back the layers of stuff that are not ours to carry until we are left with that which is truly our own. You guys might recognize some of these. There are many ways to connect to what we call the divine. The Earthkeeper family has traveled to many sacred sites over the years, to the top of Skellig Michael and the Tor, to sitting within the crop circles, climbing through the tunnels of the great pyramids of Egypt, touching the western wall, relaxing in the waters of the Dead Sea, and the list goes on and on. Every place holds a unique, powerful, and ancient energy. We open ourselves up to receive the wisdom teachings from the master souls who have gone there before us. Many here have reconnected to those lifetimes where you walked among those master souls. I mean, that how incredible is that? That's, what a gift. I always think back to say where they go, you know, you can't go back, but you know, they just never, they, they got to hang out with the Earthkeeper family. We always go back there. You know, it's great. But if you are not able to travel to the sacred sites that you see on Nat Geo or the History Channel, that's okay. Because the divine is all around and within us. It's our birthright. We all can connect with the divine through nature or rituals right where we live. Just set the intention for that to occur, and it will whether in your dreams, meditations, while walking through the forest or in the rain, sitting by lakes or streams, even laying on the grass and looking up at the clouds, the energy is all around us. All you have to do is reach out with your senses and let it in. Ah, spiritual immersion, and what a better place than the hot springs of Arkansas. Here we bring only that which we came into the world with, our true bare essence the very core within the layers of that crumpled paper. We have come to heal that which is broken inside of us. We are the key that opens the doorway. From the moment we choose to step inside, we begin the process of peeling off the dense layers of pain, doubt, betrayal, grief, and even shame that has dimmed our light. We are being nudged out of our comfort zone to go beyond the confines of the box we have placed ourselves in because we allowed others to define who we are and what we do. Only by taking back our power can we evolve and fully embrace the path that is ours to walk. Like a caterpillar within a chrysalis, the old forms dissolve and dematerialize. When we emerge, something inside of us has changed, and we may not notice it at first, but the others that are around us will, and I call it the butterfly effect. When a butterfly emerges from a chrysalis, its eyes are positioned in a way that it will never see the beauty of its own wings. We must become the mirror that reflects the beauty within those that cannot see it themselves. In this transformation, we are overflowing with energy, more than enough to spare and share. But something even more amazing occurs we are more readily able to see the similarities we share with others on the planet. We are more alike than we know. Accepting and working through our own vulnerabilities enables us to have compassion and patience with those who have different struggles. From transformation, we gain a broader view of our role in the Creator's master plan. 
we are able to see how our existence weaves harmoniously and effortlessly with the rest of humanity as well as the universe. It's not so much about being bigger or even greater. It's about having the courage to show up and be your authentic self. We were born good enough. Let's end up being brilliant. No longer stuck in the trenches of drama trauma, we soar above our situations to gain a different perspective from a higher vantage point. Our eyes on the horizon, we set sail towards our goal once more. The crumpled paper is now smoothed out. Somehow we are lighter and even more vibrant than before. And yes, we do have the creases, but those are just testaments to what we have been through and have overcome. The paper has regained a sense of purpose and is back in commission. So, create that music, write that book, paint that picture, and teach that class. Allow your soul to express itself and share your gifts with the world. I asked Archangel Michael to give a quick closing statement, and I bet you didn't know he's quite the poet among many things. So here is his message, just as I received it. On your spiritual quest, these four things I gift to you. Hope to sustain you, no matter the cost. Faith to guide you when all seems lost. Love to heal the hurt within. And the courage to continue to whatever end. From Archangel Michael's heart to yours, may you be blessed. Thank you. Standing ovation for my sister Ariel Faith Michael.